Good morning. Morning. Good morning. It is very good to see you all here and participate in worship with all of you, especially those who may be joining us for the first time in a while. It's especially good to see you here and see you able to worship with us. Whether you're worshiping online or here in person with us, we are so glad that you are with us this morning. I am Brian Nene, our intern pastor here at Zion UCC Fireside. And I want to start out with our announcements by thanking all those who helped put together the disaster kits last week. Uh, we sent out 21 kits to the association to help uh, clean up from disasters. They're going to send on the disaster buckets with kits that we assembled last week uh, to help places recover from natural disasters. Quick response, first response kit. So we sent on 21 kits, uh, and we'd like to thank Jerry, Dave, and Colin, and Bob Bowman for helping out with those uh, on Thursday when we assembled them and delivered them, and uh, also for all those who donated to help make purchasing supplies possible. So thank you to all of you for that. Also, I'd remind you that we do have our Bible group on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. If you are interested in joining us, we are meeting in the lecture lounge uh, and also via Zoom. So we've got the opportunity to uh, join a hybrid format if you'd like to do that. Currently, we are in route, and then in two weeks, we'll be moving into the book on Esther. And I do send out questions to consider beforehand in our Sunday email as well if you're interested in that. Further, we have liturgist sign-up in the West Hallway if you're interested in signing up for liturgist. Uh, we thank Jerry for being liturgist today, and we do have the next two weeks open if you're interested in being liturgist for our services. All right, and uh, finally, we'll hear more about it in the coming weeks, but the Strength in the Church Mission Day is May 23rd. We're collecting funds for Strength in the Church. Uh, we can send in offerings via mail at this point. We'll be collecting offerings for strengthening the church here in church on May 23rd. But if you'd like to send them in ahead of time and donate to that cause, this is one of our causes that we donate for the 5 for 5, for the 5 for 5 church, which is the five major mission offering of our conference in UCC. Uh, basically, it uh, helps people around the UCC to build up the conference church and also the national church setting. I'll give more detail about that in the coming weeks. Um, we'll expand on that a little bit more. But uh, let us begin our service this morning by hearing our prayers. So let's prepare our hearts for worship today.
Good morning. Please join me in a responsive call to community. Sing to our God a new song. God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Bring the great forth into joyous song and sing praises. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let, Let the world and its people sing together, sing together for joy. joy. Let's sing together our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, which is found on your bulletin insert. <clears throat>
Before we move forward to the call to confession, I just want to make sure I say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, too, who are watching and who are here with us. Uh, so we, we uh, wish you and thank you for everything you've done to make an impact on all of us, because uh, it's been a, a very large impact that mothers have in our lives and in each of our lives. So thank you and Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are watching. And now we know that we have been called to follow Christ, that we love one another as he has loved us. So let us confess to our great God how we have fallen short of that call. Let us pray together. Loving God, you made us together in our mother's womb and bring us into being. Thank you for the gift of life and for bringing us into this world through our mothers. We recognize the risk they took to carry us, nourish us, and protect us. Thank you for the women in our life, for our mothers, and for those who have been like mothers to us. We are grateful for their tenderness when they were helpless or hurt. We, we are grateful for their encouragement and wisdom when we are unsure. We are grateful for their correction and perseverance so that we would stay true. We are grateful for the way they guided us into your more saving embrace. Too often you take the love and sacrifice for granted. Forgive us. Help us to live in such a way that our words and actions bring honor to them and to you. Amen. Forgiveness of sins is given to all who repent and seek new life in Christ. The peace of God dwells in us when we honestly examine ourselves, exposing our wounds to God. God's will for us is to experience freedom in Christ Jesus. In this light, let us sing our praise. you can all can hear me from here. Uh, first, before I go into the children's story, I just want to recognize that yesterday Dan Bush gave me some certificates for being, for meeting our, our church's wider mission goal and for being a 5 for 5 congregation in 2020 and also uh, another thank you for our church's wider mission. So I'd like to recognize that publicly so you all uh, know that we achieved those goals and we were recognized by the association for doing that. Now a word for the children and the children within this morning. Have you ever been to a house on Halloween where you can actually choose what candy that you would like to take with you? Perhaps you were the one who came to a nearly empty bowl and all that were left were Almond Joys or Butterscotch Candies. Those are two that I was never particularly fond of. I've grown a little more growing up, but uh, there's always something that you're not particularly fond of, and sometimes that is what is left. Remember how disappointing that can be? I never 
used to be fond of almond joys or butterscotch, like I said, at least compared to all the other options that were out there. But sometimes we treat people like those last-to-be-chosen candies. In outdoor games, certain kids are always the last ones to be chosen. Other times, kids leave others out from gatherings, parties, or other activities. Maybe sometimes there are reasons for that, like the kid might not be a great athlete. Or maybe he or she is different and is interested in different things than your friends are. But whatever the reason, it never feels good to be left out. Was there a time when you felt left out or were chosen last? And how did that make you feel? Did you know also that you were not always alone in that sad time? For Jesus was with you. He does not want anyone to be left out. And he reminded his friends that he loves all the children, which is every one of us, no matter what they look like or what their interests or favorite candies were, or, favorite, or, or whatever their talents were as well. And Jesus wants us to love others like that also. He said, love one another as I have loved you. Today we're going to think about how to love everyone and not leave everyone out. This has been a theme for a couple weeks now too, or a theme of love and Jesus calling us to spread his love to everyone we meet. So let us pray together. God, we serve a risen Savior. He is alive. Help us, God, to be witnesses of what he has done in our lives. And may we spread love to the people that we meet, whoever they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me for a brief prayer. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O oh God, in the reading of your word, that we would hear what you would have to say to us today. May your Holy Spirit be poured out upon us through Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading today in 1 John tells us that our faith and love conquers the world. Prior to this reading, John had just explained that God is love and that those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Chapter 4, verse 16. In chapter 5, John expands on this theme. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. May God bless the reading of this word. We heard last week in the Gospel of John that Jesus is the true vine and he connects every one of us to that true vine through the branches between us. We bear fruit because we're connected to the vine, for if we were to be cut off, we would not be able to bear fruit. Jesus now tells his disciples that in order to bear fruit, they need to abide in his love. Reading from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. 
If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You do not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> David Huss tells the story of a boy who came home one hot afternoon, anxious to take a cool swim in the pond behind his Florida home. I'm sure many of us are dreaming of that hot afternoon. Well, his mother spotted him diving off the dock and went outside to check on him. And as she watched her son swim toward the middle of the lake, she also spotted an alligator moving from the far shore toward her son. She began screaming the warnings, and the boy stopped mid-swim. He finally understood the danger and began racing back to the dock. And just as he reached her, the alligator reached him. And that was a tug of war from the mother's worst nightmare. From the dock, she pulled his arms, and from the water, the alligator held his legs. But a farmer driving by heard the screams and he ran to help. And the boy survived after weeks of hospitalization and he was ready to talk to a news reporter. And the reporter asked the child if he could see where the alligator had bitten him. And with a typical pride of a boy, he showed off his healing wounds to that interested reporter. But wait, said the boy, look at these and with that he showed the reporter the scars on his arms and he said i have great scars on my arms too and i have them because my mother would not let me go a voice of the martyrs tells the story of a bible smuggler who was traveling from china to north korea his church asked him to accept a shipment of 10 hidden Bibles when he could then hand them out secretly to those who needed God's word in North Korea. He declined at first because he knew that if border guards were to catch him with even a few pages of scripture, he could be tortured or killed. But he later accepted saying, now I believe in God, and in God everything is possible. I can do anything God wants, even if it looks difficult. Maybe God's work will just be done. And he saw this opportunity when he heard a man whistling a Christian tune, and he decided to leave Bibles on his doorstep wrapped in layers of clothes so no one would be suspicious. 
he was later arrested on suspicion of promoting the gospel, but he found himself in the same prison as an entire family of 27 people who had begun meeting secretly or mis and mysterious, who had begun meeting secretly to study Bibles that had been mysteriously left on their uncle's doorstep. And they had given their lives to Christ. In that prison still today, the family is praying in their cells and teaching others to teach, to, to teach about and to learn about God. The original Bible smuggler who gave them these Bibles was released seven months later and escaped to South Korea. There was not enough evidence that he actually had the Bible in his possession. In South Korea, he is still afraid that someone from North Korea will find him and arrest him and bring him back to prison there. But he says, I just want for North Korean people to hear the gospel and share the gospel. And that is my only prayer. And that is exactly what is happening, even for that family in prison who converted because he left those Bibles on that Christian's doorstep. In 2016, a Christian pastor was beaten by a Hindu militia in India because he refused to convert to Hindu. He pleaded not with his attackers, but with God to spare him. And he then said, God has spared my life, so I will forgive them. These stories are occurring all over the world today. Christians are not free to practice their religion openly without fear for their lives on a daily basis in some parts of the world. Yet they remain willing to accept that risk so that knowledge of God might not be suppressed in these corners. Perhaps we can say too, as one did who responded to these stories, my heart is full of agony for my fellow Christians, but at the same time, joyful and full of admiration for their wonderful faith. This is not something that is far away and not and that, that we do not have to think about. For if we celebrate the unity that we have among our Christian brothers and sisters, these are our brothers and sisters who are fighting for the same thing that we are. They also need our prayers and support through our church's wider mission and other Christian agencies. What risks do we have for spreading our Christian faith to others here? The early disciples face a great deal of risk too, and many of them also ended up in prison. We know that Paul wrote many of his letters from prison and many of the best ways that the gospel was spread in those days were in the early prisons. But they still trusted their faith and led many to God, whether they were inside a prison or outside a prison. The disciples loved the people they preached to because they loved God. Disciples in suppressed countries feel the same way today. And Jesus told the disciples, as recorded in John, as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. Abide in my love. And also, love one another as I have loved you. Did that boy who was rescued from the alligator by his mother start loving others because she loved him? He saw the marks of love enough to express them to the reporter. When our parent or when a friend loves us, it means something to us. We feel loved and more inclined to love one another as a result. God has shown us love Jesus has shown us love. We have a model of how to love one another. And this is our commandment, 
This is what others seek to do in caring for other Christians who are being limited in the ways that they can practice their faith. We learn love through the models that have been shown to us. God showed us that God would sacrifice God's own Son for us. That is love greater than we can imagine. Our mother and father hopefully have shown us countless ways to love one another as we grew up in their tender and loving care. We sing to God how great thou art because of what has been shown to us and done for us through that love that we have seen in our lives and through that love that has made us who we are today. Jesus tells, our, tells us that he laid down his life for his friends. He also tells us that there is no greater love than that in John 15. He is the prime example of absolute love. Do you think that someone can feel pride because they are so loving, because they feel that they are the ones who love more than others might love? There are many great forms of pride that we celebrate, such as when a mother is proud of his or uh, of proud, such as when a mother is proud of her son or daughter. There are also sinful forms of pride that we continually need to be conscious of, such as when the Pharisee elevated himself above a tax collector in Luke 18. And as Pastor Sam Marin from Life Church noted, sinful pride is the elevation of yourself above someone else. We have all put ourselves higher than another at some point. The first form of pride is, I'm better than you. We're better than that person because we go to church, or we love more than they do. I'm better than that person because I ran my race under five hours and they didn't. The second form of pride is an I can handle it pride, when we can think that we can do things without God's help. When I ran my marathon last week, I knew that my strength would fail and I would have to ask God for additional strength. When we pretend that we can handle it by ourselves, our faith becomes weak because we lean on ourselves rather than trust God to pull us through. And in truth, we do not know how to love without the example that God has shown us without God's own help along the way. We need God. And the third is that it doesn't apply to me. The pastor had asked a room full of people to raise their hand if they struggled with a sin of pride. I'm not doing that today. But about half raised their hand. And he noted that he was talking to them, the ones who raised their hand but that he was also talking even more to the people who were too proud to raise their hands. Perhaps you have thought that there are certain rules that, apply, that do not apply to you because of the status that you have in a certain organization. Uh, King David, for example, was called out on his sin with Bathsheba. Did he think that he did not have to follow the law because he had a high status? Or perhaps if we are head of a company. We do not have to follow the same rules that other people in the company need to follow. Even the best of us tell ourselves that it is okay to break the rules sometimes, especially rules that God lays down for us because we follow the rules most of the time. It has to be okay to break them some of the time. For example, we have done enough loving for today do we really have to love this person too? The answer to that is yes. We are to love everyone, even if we have already exhausted our love reserves for that day. Jesus never told the crowds who followed him, 
when he wanted to be alone, that his love tank had been drained. Instead, he preached to them all afternoon, and then he fed them with five loaves of bread and two fish. His love never ran out. We are never above the call to love our neighbor, and we never love better than the one who first loved us. Do you know someone else whose love never runs out? It's a mother's love. Or a mother always finds love to love their children, even when they are very frustrating at times. Have you ever wanted to be someone's friend, but it does not seem that they notice you or appreciate you? Jesus says, to conclude in John 15, that we are no longer called servants, but we are called friends. It does not matter that we will never love as well as he loved us. For if we follow the commandment to love one another, which is outside of loving, which outside of loving God is basically the single commandment that Jesus asks us to follow, to love one another. If we do this, Jesus promises to call us a friend. And a friend is someone who we live with and talk with regularly. A friend is someone who loves us and wants what is best for us. This is what Jesus promises to be for us. When I write in my journal letters, I write letters sometimes in my journal and I write some to God, I try to always sign it, friend, because we are each God's friend. And this is what Jesus tells us here in John 15. If we see Jesus as far off and not accessible, we need to think on this promise. Can we see Jesus as our friend today? Can you talk to him like you can talk to any friend that you have? Not that he sees it as a competition, but he is the best friend you will ever have. Even though he lived 2,000 years ago, he lives as our friend today. So he is not one of those friends who are far off, or needs to feel far off. There is no pride to take in that. Jesus has the best love. It is just who he is. It is his character. And he is the one who sought you out. Ronald Cole Turner is a professor and the chair of theology at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. And he wrote the following on God's character. We do not have to guess what God is like. We simply have to look at what God has done. The one thing we cannot do is to claim to love God while refusing to love the sister or brother in front of us. Our love for others should follow the same pattern as God's love for us. Like God, we are to love the one who is unlovely and unresponsive, it is easy for us to love those who love in return. We are commanded, though, to love the one who is unloving and angry and hurtful. We do not cast them out of our lives, but we love them again and again and again. This is how Christians in suppressed countries keep on living and finding hope. They forgive their persecutors and instead choose to pray for them. Even if you get upset from your mother from time to time about things, you can make an exception on Mother's Day. You can make every day Mother's Day. You can love everyone despite the frustrations and even the pain that they will cause you. We are nearing the end of the 50 days of Easter, and our theme has led us to ask the question, now what? What does it mean to be an Easter people? In its simplest terms, it means that we love one another. We see that God gave the ultimate sacrifice. 
and we know that we can never be as loving as that. But when we see that, and when we recognize it to be true, we are called to repent of anything that clouded our judgment or our faith, and see what the world has brought us. We declare that we have heard and seen no matter what anyone else tries to convince us. God has done miracles for us. God is great. Second, we are witnesses to what we hear Jesus preach as an Easter people, both to the original disciples as recorded in the Bible and in our very own lives as we hear Jesus today. Third, we live the word. We spread the love that Jesus shared with us, for this is what Easter is all about. No evil in the world, not even death itself, can conquer the force of love that God shares with us. Let us love one another, not just to say, I love you, but to truly love one another. We have many models for us in this world today, God's love and a mother's love and a friend's love. Let Jesus call us a friend. Let us be friends together. Let us be friends together through all of the challenges that we know are ahead. For God made this possible. God is our model and God will see us through. Thanks be to God and amen. As we celebrate Jesus being our friend, let us sing our song found in our red books, number 289, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You may rise and sing if you like, or you can stay seated.
place and you will stand again for the praise moment or in a moment. But now we are people who God has blessed with many gifts. God has done marvelous things for us. Let us show our friendship with Christ and our love for our neighbors by giving generously so that we might bear the lasting fruits of Christ's love. Our offering is still not being passed, but you can leave any offering in the offering plates, which are at the rear of the sanctuary and also on the top of the uh, west staircase right here. So you may leave your offering in the plates at any time, or you may continue to mail your offerings into the church. And we do appreciate all of your gifts and all of the work that you do to make the love of Christ possible for all of us to spread together. So let us sing our response of praise. <laughs> pronunciation, but uh, I understand that uh, Terry Nagy died in a house fire on Friday evening uh, in Fremont, I believe. Uh, so some people in the church might know her. It was passed to me by uh, one of the members in the church, and I know that there are many, her family and friends, are shocked and devastated by her loss. So we'll pray for her and her family today. Uh, are there Oh, and of course, we celebrate the birthday of Lori Patton, which is May 13th, or May 14th. So, happy birthday to Lori! And are there uh, actually a joy? We have Viola in church, uh, so we, we celebrate uh, Viola being in church today, and welcome back to church, Viola. It's awesome to see you here. Uh, we 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 celebrate the good news that we're, I know we're uh, missing Olive today, but we celebrate that she's been doing well as well. Uh, so are there any other joys or concerns to share? And let us pray together. Lord, as you have chosen us, empower and equip us. Make us worthy of our calling, that we may reveal your love and show forth your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit abides forever. 
We rejoice that you have called us to be sons and daughters of God, that you have given us a faith that in you conquers all things. Bless, O oh Lord, all who are seeking to live by what they believe, all who long to hear your word and do your will. We pray for all in their ministry and their vocation, especially any who are going through a time of trial or temptation. Guide all leaders in industry and commerce. May the goods of this world be neither hoarded nor squandered. We pray that there may be a fair distribution of love and resources in this world. We pray for all who are ill-treated in the world of trade. Lord, we rejoice that you have called us to know you. You have called us to love you, and you have called us to serve you. May we reveal our calling, love, and service in all of our dealings with people. Lord, bless and protect our homes and our loved ones. As we go throughout our day and our dealings, remind us to always lean on you. As we pray for our own deepest need, and for the need of another, Lord of love, be a comfort to the sorrowing, be a strength to the weak. Give hope to all who are dying. We pray for all who have been injured this week, and all who are falling into illness or disability, for those who can no longer cope on their own, that each in their trouble may know your love. God, we especially pray for those in our care, including Bill Carroll, Shirley Dick, Mike Hamer, Jay Jackson, Calvin Kegley, Yvonne Montoya, Jack Ryan, Dorothy Sherk, Viola Ziegler, Shirley Butts, Olive Weller, Eric Smith, Bob Bowman, Pauline Joseph, and Troy Lucy. We also pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for the family and friends of Terry Nagy. God, may you comfort them in their grief. We look forward to the time when we shall know you and love you and enjoy you forever when we shall share with your saints in glory. Lord of all creation, may your will be done. May your love be spread. Help us to spread your love throughout the earth and help us to be stewards of your love, praying as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us thank God for all of God's good gifts uh, that we are able to celebrate today, mothers of God's love and uh, all that we have to celebrate. Let us sing from our red book, number 307, Now Thank We All Our God. <laughs>
of Christ carry God's love into the world, you have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. Live in the joy of Christ's love and in all the marvelous things that God is doing. May the righteous fairness of God, the loving friendship of Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit go with you all. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 